we're talking about the middle voice. This is Unit 7 in Hansen and Quinn. Um, and um, we need to basically scrap what Hansen and Quinn says about the middle. This is a difficult concept. Um, and it, the, the book says something that seems intuitive. Um, it it uh, I like your <laughs> no it, it seems to say okay so there's the active we understand that and there's the passive so so the middle should be something in between and if you think of the passive as um, I I I'm, I throw a brick um, of the active as I throw the brick as the passive as the brick is thrown by me well what's the middle thing in between going to be so or uh, what what the book thinks of is reflexive, right? Mm -hmm. Which is stuff like I like myself, all right? Okay. A reflexive verb has the the subject as the object as well, right? And Greek has a way of doing that. It has reflexive pronouns, pronouns whose antecedent is the subject of the sentence. And so it says that. So there's no there would be no need to have a, a, a whole voice right. that does that. and it, and and it isn't right, okay? Um, it, it's, a, it's a different concept, and the terminology is kind of un unfortunate. But um, I think I mentioned in class that we have the, maybe the, the best way to start this process of understanding what the middle is, and I think it's something that has to kind of come over you over time, um, and maybe over a long time, because you have to experience it. But we, we can... Mm -hmm. What we can do is make some general statements about what the middle is, and then um, the best thing to do is to learn some examples and start to see, get get a, an inkling yourselves of what it is. So um, here's one one way to approach it, which I've taken from the the great French uh, uh, linguist, uh, historical linguist, Emile Benveniste, uh, um, a super scholar of uh, Greek language. And what he does is, to try and explain this, is to, to look at the verbs in Greek, and there are plenty, which only are active, okay? There are some verbs that just have no middle or passive even, okay? And there are others that are only middle and have no passive or active forms, all right? And, and compare what they mean. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read this list to you. Um, and then maybe we'll talk about it, and then I'll read it again. Okay, so just sort of think it through. So here are the verbs that are only active. To be, to flow, to creep, to bend, to blow, to eat, to drink, to give. And here are some verbs that are only middle. To be born, to follow, to obtain, to lie, to sit, to return, to enjoy, to suffer, to be mentally agitated. Okay. Um, that's, uh, I don't know if this is meaningful to you, but here's the way he defines the difference. He says, a middle process is one that starts from a subject, but is completed outside of the subject. Okay. Uh, this is an active process. I, did I say middle? Mm -hmm. No, that was a mistake. So let's start again. An active process is one that starts from a subject but is completed outside of the subject. Mm -hmm. So here's the list again. To be, to flow, to creep, to bend, to blow, to eat, to drink, and to give. All right? Um, whereas a middle process is one which takes place entirely within the subject in which the subject is interior to the process. Um, it's, so it's, we're not talking about reflexiveness, we're talking about how the subject is involved in the way the process works. So here are the only middle verbs, to be born, to follow, to obtain or possess, to lie, to sit, to return, to enjoy, to suffer, to be agitated. Okay? Um, so it's not about, about uh, verbs that take a direct object, or that don't take a direct object. You know, there's a category of so-called intransitive verbs like sleep and things like that. It's, we're not talking about that. We're talking about the kind of process that, that we're, we're, 
that it is involved here. So um, here's another way of looking at it. Um, um, you can you can look at verbs in the language, and the and the book has a short list of the ones that you know. Okay, this is on page 168. And this is here where everything gets concrete and practical, and where you can look at it yourselves. This is on page 168. It gives you the middle voice of verbs which you've already learned, which are active, okay? And it gives you what they mean in the middle. And we're not talking about forms, we're talking about meaning here. So the first one is the verb ajo, that means rule in the active. And in the middle it means begin, okay? So think about a process that, that starts with a subject but is completed outside of the subject, as opposed to... A, a process in which it initiates with the subject, in which the subject is interior to the process. Okay, so there's the verb grafo that means to write, and in the middle it means to note something down, to cause something to be written, or, or to indict someone. All right. Um, there's the verb didasco to teach, and in the middle it means to have somebody taught for you. Um, this is the this is the example in the Sanskrit grammarians. The Sanskrit grammarians' terminology isn't active and middle. It's um, atmane padam and parasmai padam, a word for another and a word for oneself. Um, and, and so their, their example there is the verb yajati, which is the verb that means sacrifice. In the active, that's yajati. It's when you sacrifice uh, for somebody else. Mm -hmm. Um, in the middle, yajate, it means to sacrifice uh, for yourself, to, to perform the ritual for yourself, okay? So that's another way of thinking about it. So here we are with the verb, the Greek verb sacrifice, thuo, which is to sacrifice an animal. That's what we've learned. In the middle, it means cause a sacrifice to be made, presumably for your own benefit, or consult the gods. So this is maybe coming into focus? I don't know. Here are some more examples. Luo, the verb unbind or free. In the middle it means unbind one's own or for oneself. Let's forget about one's own, okay, and talk about for oneself. To cause someone to be freed or to ransom somebody. That's that's the main meaning of luo in the middle, okay? Um, so so you can see how the, the subject gets involved in the process. Here's another one. The verb pao means to make someone or something stop in the active, but in the middle it means cease, right? All right, like I cease doing something, okay? And here's a, here's a better one, or here's another one anyway. There's patho, the verb to persuade. We had that in the last lesson. And in the middle it means not persuade oneself and not obey, which is the meaning the book gives, but comply with, okay? To, to uh, in other words, um, it's not. It's it's again something happening inside. When you persuade somebody, you persuade you start yourself and you persuade someone else. Right. But when you comply with someone, it's happening inside you. Right? Mm -hmm. Is it is it helpful? Then here are two more. Tato, the verb that means to draw someone up in battle or to station someone in a place in battle. That's starting with the subject and ending up outside the subject. And then there's tatomai, the middle, which means to put oneself, to fall into battle order. Okay? All right? And lastly, there's fulato, that means to guard someone or something. And then in the middle, it means to, to be on guard against someone. All right? All right. I think that's what we want to say at the moment about the middle. And if you want to get, you know, what's important is to look at that list. Those are the verbs that we need to, whose middle meaning we need to understand. And I'll give you a sense of how it works.